Hi, this is Charles Wiley from Columbia Theological Seminary, and I'm happy to be talking today with Tim Hartman, who is an assistant professor of theology at Columbia. I hope you're doing well today, Tim. I am indeed. So um, you uh, just finished teaching, and now uh, we have graduation uh, soon, I guess tomorrow on the day we're recording this. You've been teaching theology this semester um, while all this stuff has been going on. What insights, mm -hmm. what themes, what insights have you gotten theologically as you've been reflecting on the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, thanks so much for that question. We really have been thinking about a lot. Uh, I was teaching both Reformed theology this semester and Christian theology too. And as Easter came upon us in the midst of our stay-at-home orders, a um, couple of classes, we had great conversations about resurrection and what kind of the asking the question of how should we celebrate Easter when we couldn't gather. Right. And we had this kind of debate going on um, where one student really thoughtfully was like, this isn't Easter. What we, we, if we can't get together, we should just postpone Easter till we can get out of being stay at home orders and then have a massive party. Right. Which, which was really kind of compelling in that moment, right? This way of being like, yeah, yeah. Eh, if we can't do it, right, do we do it at all? And then someone else came back with like, well, I mean, aren't we resurrection people, right? Isn't every day to be lived in light of the resurrection goes well or not, whether we can do what we want to do or not? Um, and it did create this really interesting and helpful dialogue about what it means to be people who believe in a resurrected Jesus in a time that looks completely different than any of us have ever lived in. Yeah, I remember when this, when thanks church services first getting started getting shut down or moved online, I posted uh, what seemed like so far away. I understand canceling in-person services now, but Easter, can you possibly do it on Easter? And by the time Easter rolled around, it wasn't even a conversation, you know, it was clear we weren't going to be meeting in person. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, I find that this whole notion of the church as this gathered in-person community, mm -hmm. which is so important for what we understand church to be, to really have been challenged during this time. How do you think about that or of, of the in-person gathered community now? All right, I need to bring in a friend uh, to help me with this one, I think. Here we go. Okay. So with Carl Bart over my shoulder, um, right? Somehow I'm hiding Carl Bart's pipe at the moment, which seems somewhat um, bringing him into the 21st century. Um, so Bart talks about the church, as you know, the church being gathered and up, upbuilt and sent, right? So we have yeah. this three, the three-legged stool is how I talk about Bart's ecclesiology, right? So we can't gather right now, at least right. not physically. And so what do questions of a building look like? How can a church be strengthened? And what does it mean to be sent when you're supposed to stay at home? So we, um, I posed a version of this on our Theology 2 final uh, uh -huh. to students, where um, it was kind of a situational question. And uh, the first guy um, was like, well, I think these stay-at-home orders are, uh, are unchristian. Because, uh -huh. you know, and, and anti-American, I think I threw in as well. Um, and allowed students to think about if you can't, what does it mean to gather? And this particular person was like, right. well, if two or three people gather and a couple of students were like, what about people who are home by themselves? And so I think it's important to remember, A, this is, we're not in normal time. Right. right. I mean, even in the church year, it talks about ordinary time. This isn't ordinary time. I do love how um, children's ministry often talks about these days. It's the, you know, green is the liturgical color for ordinary time. Talked about as the, the great green growing days. We're talking about different types of growing now, right? Yeah. That, um, that there are connections that can happen for people um, while we're in our homes. Yet at the same time, it's, it's a different thing. And it is temporary. This is right. not how we're meant to live. Um, right. But we're, we, we're all doing the best we can at the moment. Um, that's very nice visual aid you got going there. Um, Thank you. So uh, I know you spent a lot of time studying Kwame Vidiaiko and other African theologians and without, uh, you know, 
wouldn't want to generalize about all African theology by any stretch of the imagination, but are there any insights you get from there that you think are helpful in this time? The biggest thing that's come to mind is I spent um, six months living in South Africa in Cape Town. Right. And I worked with at the Desmond Tutu Center for Religion and Social Justice. And the, the Facebook posts and the communication I have with um, my South African friends are like, what does social distancing mean for people that live in informal settlements that are basically shacks? Right. So there's this whole, there's a narrative of privilege going on in the midst of this that we need right. to unpack theologically, um, as well as the number of, have other African friends who've talked about the pastors, you know, saying, come to church, this is the safe place. Uh, God will protect us. God will heal us. God will deliver us. And the, what I have loved to watch are my friends who are African theologians responding to both of those pieces, responding to the questions of justice in among the, the impoverished and the, the unprivileged, um, particularly in South Africa, and seeking ways for folks to come up with humane understandings of how to be safe in the midst of a pandemic that look at who God has created us to be as whole. So both that aspect for my South African friends, as well as um, a theologian from Ghana I was talking to is like, no, we need to think God calls us to live in the present, not in some distant future after we die. Right. As, as well, God cares about science and we need to listen to the scientists in our midst who are telling us about how this disease is spread, not just come into church and, um, apparently there was one pastor that called his people to come to church and hold hands and pray that, the, that they be protected from the pandemic, which is the opposite of what any epidemiologist would tell us to do at the moment. Right. I, I had been trying to think of, um, you know, sort of theological themes having to do with the pandemic and playing around with different things. And then it occurred to me that the answer may have been much simpler than I thought it was, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. that it, um, that, of course, doesn't answer all questions, but it seems to me that governing our behavior and our, I, you know, our thoughts and our attitudes really should be love of God and love of neighbor, and that that um, actually informs us a lot on how we behave. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and the, in the in this, right? This is something that typically African theologians have a better sense of than European and white North American theologians, this interconnectedness of one human to another. Uh, yeah. Um, I, yeah. Community. Yeah. You, it's, um, um, our, um, yeah, I don't want to go off too much on that. That's really interesting because, uh, a lot of the struggles we're having right now is, uh, over, uh, asserting my individual rights as the most important thing. And so the, then the individualized response to that is love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. But the, the communal response is like, how did we even get there? Like we're all in this thing together. Right. So what's good for you is what's good for me. And what's good for me is what's good for you. So can we, can we be a community together? You know, yes. I, yes. It's, uh, um, it's interesting how different cultures have different challenges with this. And our challenge is clearly that uh, don't tread on me becomes sort of the, <laughs> the motto for living. Um, are there any, besides love your neighbor as yourself, is there any other biblical texts that come to mind when you reflect on what we're going through right now? I mean, I, I think back a little bit to the Easter and to resurrection and to think, the the end of mark of the, the the short ending of mark right when the the women came to the tune and then they fled because they were afraid um and that's it this is where mark ends um we end with the the fear and the fleeing right um but what i'm always reminded of there and um hold hold on to is the fact that god is on the loose in our midst and that jesus is risen at that point and while we may be overwhelmed with the power of encountering that, that it's, it's, a, it's a gift unlike any other. And that God's power is present among us all and connecting us and is 
is our hope right now, that our hope lies in Jesus Christ, not, not even in a, in a lab seeking a cure, certainly not at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, um, not even with our brothers and sisters of the CDC, um, but this is where our hope is in Jesus Christ. Oh, that's really helpful. That's a really great way to sort of wrap up our conversation. So thanks tons, Tim, for uh, uh, agreeing to talk to me, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully see each other in person soon. Indeed, I hope so as well.